silence, not one single cry, not even a whimper, no giggles, no sighs of pain, nothing. This is what an American couple heard as they walked down a hallway of an orphanage in the former Soviet Union. The orphanage was filled with babies, but not one of them made a peep. Upon hearing this bewildering silence, the couple began to think back on the sounds one would find in a church nursery. Cries, squeals, laughs. Suddenly, they realized the cause of this horrific silence. Babies innately cry when they need something. The babies in this orphanage realized that when they cry, no one will come to help them, so there is no point in making any noise. No one will come to change their diaper. No one will come to feed them. No one will come. The muted children at this particular orphanage join their fatherless brothers and sisters around the world in the silent cry for justice and love. They need a voice. The church must shout their anthem for them. James 1.27 says, Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Christians must obey this call to care for orphans. The problem of orphanhood and the remedy of adoption have been in existence throughout all centuries. The first example of adoption in the Bible is found in Exodus, which was written around 1430 BC. Pharaoh's daughter rescued Moses from the Nile River and took him as her own, demonstrating that adoptions occurred even at the beginning of civilization. Centuries later, ancient Romans left their unwanted babies out in the streets to die. The early church would search the city for orphan babies to rescue and to take home as part of their family. Even since the Roman Empire ruled the world, Christians have had the responsibility of rescuing orphans. In recent years, there has been a surge of orphans globally. This epidemic has been named the Global Orphan Crisis. The United Nations Children's Fund explains that in 2015, there were approximately 140 million orphans globally. In just three years, that number has increased to 153 million. Also, in 2005, there were roughly 46,000 international adoptions. By 2015, that number had decreased by 72% to only about 12,000 international adoptions. The United States Immigration and Nationality Act defines an orphan as a child who's experienced the death or disappearance of, abandonment or desertion by, or separation or loss from both parents. Foster care, as defined by the United States Children's Bureau, is providing safe, out-of-home care for children until the children are safely returned home or placed permanently with adoptive families. Each member of the church must actively be involved in orphan care. First, Christians ought to actively care for orphans because the Bible explicitly commands it. Second, God's people mirror the Father's love and their own spiritual adoption by caring for the fatherless. Third, there are numerous practical ways for each Christ follower to be involved in orphan care. First, Christians must look after orphans because the Bible directly commands it. According to John 14, 9, if one truly loves the Lord, then he will obey God's commands. To follow Christ is to earnestly strive to follow his commands. 1 John 2, 4, and 6 says, Whoever says, I know him, but does not do what he commands, is a liar, and the truth is not in that person. Whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. Jesus lived to serve the needy, and scripture tells Christians on numerous occasions to actively serve the orphaned. Furthermore, Kelly Kathak, a theological professor at Covenant College, explains what it means to truly know the Lord when he writes, when we come to the question of knowing God, the Bible plunges us into caring for those he cares for, and thus into living with a concrete concern for the poor, the weak, and those who suffer. How can a man say he loves and personally knows the Lord if he neglects to obey him and take care of his children? More specifically, Matthew 25, 36 explains that Christians are to care for the poor when Christ says, I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Christ tells his people that when they serve the poor and needy, they actually serve Christ himself. 
Jesus later says, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for the least of these, you did not do for me. Christ makes it abundantly clear that his true followers will take care of the needy and the orphaned. Ministering to the fatherless is not only a command, but an identifying characteristic of each Christ follower. In scripture, each Christian is personally commanded countless times to take care of the fatherless. Furthermore, Christians ought to care for orphans because the Bible mandates that the Christian aid those who are in great physical need. Many orphans around the world live in inhumane conditions. Disability Rights International sent social workers to visit orphanages around the world, and for the most part, found the living conditions inhumane and cruel. The president of the organization described the severe neglect when she said, we have seen neglected babies who rock back and forth, bite their hands and gouge their eyes as a result of mind numbing boredom and neglect. She goes on further to explain the starvation these children are experiencing when she tells of 30 pound teenagers in Romania and Turkey. Orphans around the world are inadequately clothed, extremely underfed and emotionally neglected. Christians must not allow this abuse to continue. The Bible demands each follower of Christ to help the needy, and orphans are in immense need. Second, Christians ought to care for orphans because in so doing, they mimic their own spiritual adoption. John Piper uses Galatians 4, 4 through 8 to explain that the entire reason Christ came into this world is so that sinners might be adopted. Paul writes, God sent his son to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. Here, Paul testifies that adoption is the purpose for which Christ came into the world. Piper goes on further to explain that the word adoption is rarely used in the New Testament and is not used in the Old Testament. Rather than using the term rebirth to explain our spiritual state, as Paul most often does, he uses adoption to emphasize the incredible grace of God. We are not just a new creation. We are legally adopted out of the dark mire of sin and brought into the Father's arms. This truth ignites the heart of the believer to adopt because he or she has already been adopted. In addition, when Christians defend the fatherless, they clearly see the weighty effects of their sin. Larry Taunton described the inhumane care given in his daughter's orphanage in Ukraine in his book, The Grace Effect. One Ukrainian caseworker described the meals the orphans are served when he said, Watching the kids eat, there have been times when I have had to cover my nose from the stench because the food is rotten. I've seen children spit on it as soon as they get it so that no one else will take it. These precious image bearers fight over scraps of rotten food so they can have something to fill their empty stomachs. The neglect orphans face also causes psychological trauma. One of the most heartbreaking conditions is radical attachment disorder. This disorder inhibits children from giving and receiving love because as infants, they were severely neglected. Realizing that the pitiful physical and psychological conditions orphans face are a result of the depravity of humanity makes the Christian more eager to adopt. Moreover, God created the world so that each person would be surrounded by the loving arms of the family, but the depravity of man has robbed some children from this natural right. Even orphans who have their physical needs met by gracious caregivers are still in a suboptimal situation because every human heart naturally longs for family. The Lord displayed this God-given longing to me personally in a conversation with a beloved friend who was orphaned when she was just five years old. This friend is a precious 14-year-old who currently lives in a home for girls. When I asked this friend what she wanted to be when she grew up, she replied, a soldier. I was shocked by this and asked her why, to which she responded, because soldiers have family. My friend was willing to go to war just so that she could experience this sweet communion of family. Man innately longs for the familial structure that the Heavenly Father first created. However, because of man's sin, this structure is shattered. Thankfully, God paved the way to adopt the broken human race, and he sets the example for the church to go and adopt these deserted children. Third, there are many ways to care for orphans, and Christians must be involved in some of these capacities. Christians need to prayerfully decide if the Lord is calling them to adoption. With the cost of international adoption ranging from $25,000 to $40,000, many families turn away from this calling. In fact, 
Of the 81.5 million Americans who consider adoption, if only one of every 500 families actually take the leap of faith and bring a child home, then every orphan who is eligible for adoption will have a family. Although the process of adoption is overwhelming and expensive, the Lord will provide a way. Generally, the adoption process begins with deciding on domestic, international, or fostering to adopt, then choosing an agency, finalizing a home study, waiting to be matched with a child, and legally and physically completing the adoption. This process is anxiety-ridden and can take years to complete, but the Lord will sustain the one who is obedient to him. Likewise, God calls some of his children to fulfill the daunting role of being foster parents. The road to becoming a foster parent is also long and steep, but the Lord will provide the strength needed. One needs only to step out in faith. To become a foster parent, one must find a fostering agency with which to work, attend informative classes on how foster care works and how to best raise foster children, complete intense paperwork to obtain a license to foster, have a home inspection, and wait to be paired with a child. This process can seem intimidating, but the Lord is faithful. Furthermore, Christians can be involved, involved in orphan care by financially supporting families. Alex Sam, founder of A Home for Orphans in Pakur, India, explained the impact that financial supporters have on effectively ending global orphanhood when he said, if one Christian family adopts and 10 Christian families stand behind them, we will have a world without orphans. If the Lord has blessed a family financially, then they need to seriously consider supporting individual adoptions or orphanages. Another way to actively bless orphans is by helping orchestrate fundraisers for families adopting or volunteer at nonprofit organizations that support orphanages. Thus, one way to actively be involved in orphan care is by giving financially. Also, all Christians need to be in prayer daily on behalf of the fatherless. Christians need to pray for their present health and that godly couples will rise up to adopt these abandoned babies into stable homes. God's people also need to pray that these orphans will come to personally know their Heavenly Father. Prayer is a mighty weapon, and the church must use it on the behalf of orphans. One may say that adoption is too costly and use finances as an excuse to ignore the call to adopt. John Piper refutes this claim by explaining that the Christian's adoption into God's family was extremely expensive. But God did it anyway. The Lord set the example of looking past the severe cost of adoption so that a child might have a home. If God calls you to adopt, then he will provide the funds. There are countless stories of adoptive families receiving anonymous checks for the exact cost of a fee that needed to be paid. The Lord will provide a way for the one who steps out in faith. The church must actively obey the mandate to care for the orphaned. Christians need to actively love orphans because the Bible directly commands it. Furthermore, God's adopted children must care for orphans because they will imitate the care they received as orphans. Lastly, there are many ways the body of Christ can fulfill James 1.27. In conclusion, each member of the church must get active in orphan care. Sarah's covenant home in India describes how their orphans pray daily when they write, The truth of the matter is that our children ache for family. They ask and pray for it nightly, sometimes through quivering breaths and deep cries. The church must step up and find homes for these hurting children. The verb to look after, used in James 1.27, is episkeptomai. This verb is defined as to look upon in order to help or benefit, to examine with the eyes. The cultural connotations for this verb explain that the Christian must physically go and look after the fatherless. This mandate cannot be obeyed by mere sympathy towards the orphaned. It can only be fulfilled by continual efforts to physically look after, care for, and tangibly help the fatherless. It is now up to the church to fulfill this mandate and bring these children home. Thank you.
average cost of an adoption is between thirty and forty thousand dollars. Should the church help with this cost? If so, how? Absolutely. Um, as I mentioned, um, there's always fundraisers going on to help um, families who are currently adopting. Um, there are tons of ways that um, a church family can support one of their members as they are trying to um, raise the funds for such an expensive um, deed. Are there situations in which families should not adopt? My thesis is geared toward the evangelical church. So um, within those bounds, I would say that there um, are no um, families that should not adopt. However, as soon as you go outside of those bounds and you get into um, corrupt marriages um, and unbiblical families, I would say that those people should not adopt. What are some ways that we can prevent orphanhood? That's a great question. Um, it's something that I wanted to include in my thesis but was unable to do so because of time constraints. Um, so one way that we can help prevent orphanhood is by shopping fair trade. When we shop fair trade, we um, purchase products from men and women who are um, who have different diseases, HIV or AIDS, and are unable to get jobs in their um, in their homeland, in their home country. And so when we shop fair trade, we offer them the opportunity to have a job and to make money to put food on their table for their children and so they don't have to give them up for adoption. Also in America, um, one way that we can be active in preventing orphanhood is obviously by being pro-life and not only being pro-birth and advocating for the children's children's right to be born, but for being involved in the mother's life as she seeks to find a family to place her child in. What are your thoughts on sending the church into orphanages on short-term missions assignments? Children in orphanages are the most heartbroken and vulnerable children in the world. When we send a mission trip, or we send a mission team into an orphanage, and they love all these children, and they grow close to them, and then two weeks later, they're gone and never talk to them again. These children who have abandonment issues already are going to be sent spiraling down further into just just toxic um, situations and depression. Also, when we send um, short-term mission trips into orphanages, it makes the children um, less able to connect with their adoptive families once they are adopted. So if um, someone has feels the call to go and serve in an orphanage, that's great, but they need to be committed long-term um, at the absolute minimum six months. In your research, did you find any laws or U.S. policies that need to be changed in order for Christians to be able to effectively participate in adoption? So um, in my research, I did not go into any specific laws within America. Um, currently, we do not have orphanages in the United States. We have the foster care system and a few group homes, um, which is um, far more individualized care than um, orphanages. And so um, the church needs to just um, be active in the the families in their own spheres, and if um, they come across some kind of legal situation that is um, that is stifling to their situation, then they need to pray and to go to their government officials to see if they can get that changed. Is the decline of international adoption solely the result of Christians failing to adopt, or are there other factors at play? It is not the um, sole um, purpose, sole factor of the of. The Christians not adopting, um, with the increase of um, with the AIDS epidemic and other kinds of diseases currently going around our world, um, orphanhood is just um, going to be a natural an increase in orphanhood is going to be a natural result of that. Um, but that only should encourage the church to get more active. Can a person be a Christian without taking care of orphans? Yes. So obviously, as Christians, we um, will fall short. We will not um, fulfill every single mandate that the Lord has given us. But it is our duty to every day strive to complete more of the task that he has set before us. And if we truly love the Lord, then we will seek out ways to obey him more. And taking care of his children is one of um, the most incredible ways that you can do that. Um, you mentioned that some orphans are eligible for adoptions and others are not. Why would an orphan not be considered eligible for adoption, and how can the church effectively serve those children? So different countries have different laws um, for their for their specific children. And sometimes, even within that country, different children can have different laws based on another child. Um, and so, unfortunately, many children are what we call unadoptable or unable to be orphaned, unable to be adopted. 
And um, the church can minister to these children specifically um, in a host of ways. Lifeline Children's Services has created a program called Unadopted. And this program goes into these communities and um, it preaches the gospel to these children who cannot be adopted. It sets them up with people that can cultivate their faith and it equips them with ways they can get a job and be effective members of that specific community. Thank you, Mary Beth. Thank you so much.